So this is the microwave spot welder that I built. I got my idea from Grant Thompson, the king of random. He is on YouTube and he has a really cool video on how to build this spot welder. I tried it out and I made mine basically the same as his, but I did add a cam for holding my metal in place. Basically, there's a microwave plug that goes into the spot welder. There's a power switch on the back. Microwave handle to pick up the unit, make it portable. Um, I added this yellow cam up top to move uh, the electrode tips up and down. And like Grant did in his video, I used a switch from a microwave. And that switch is for... Um, operating the spot welder. Here's a quick look at how it works. We're all plugged in. Our power switch is on. I have two pieces of sheet metal. Uh, we're going to drop it in here. You can see the cam is used to hold it in place. And then you hit the power switch. And once that thing heats up, that'll weld your metal. I also find it works a little bit better if you adjust the metal in here. It helps it to um, act more as a resistor and gain heat. So you can see there that is spot welded together. So here's the transformer that I'll be using. It came from a GE microwave oven. Basically you can see there's a primary coil down on the bottom which is much thicker and there's a secondary coil up top which is much thinner and has many more winds. Uh, as you look at this transformer if uh, you'd plug this thing in and get zapped from this, it would be lethal. That's why we're going to modify it. I've seen uh, several microwave oven transformer websites. They call them MOT or MOT. And on those websites, uh, talk about different ways to wire these things up and separating transformers. And uh, a lot of people use a, a grinder or a hacksaw and cut this weld. And then the transformer needs to be either welded or glued back together. Um, I've also heard about cutting this with a hacksaw and then knocking out the secondary. Um, that way it keeps the uh, transformer intact, so that's what I'm going to try and do. So I have it clamped up in the vise, and I'm going to use a sawzall and a hacksaw. So I just need to get through the secondary, and I want to be very careful not to hit the primary. So I'm just going to start it with the sawzall, and we'll see how that goes. So now what we're going to try and do is I'm just taking the head of a square bolt and I'm going to try and pound the secondary out and it's already moving. I have it clamped in the vise. That's it. So here's a look at the uh, secondary. This is the, the cross section and literally it's just all made up of uh, wire. I mean, it's the ends of all the wires there. Uh, that's pretty heavy, that's solid copper. That's probably worth a couple bucks. And uh, here's the transformer. Um, this is my primary, I want to leave this intact. And up here I still have a couple wires in here. So I'm taking a, a pliers and I'm just trying to wiggle these out. And it looks like they're going to come out with a little bit of wiggling. There we go. So in here, 
right above the primary we have some shunts the shunts are going to stay in place i left them in there um, they're like little spacers made out of transformer laminations so you just want to leave them and uh, i'm going to check the continuity on this thing all right good we have continuity so that means nothing's broken i didn't bump it or anything but i just thought it'd be a good idea to check the continuity so now I'm going to show you how to wind the new secondary on the transformer. I'm using two gauge wire. So we're going to feed it through one end just like that. And I'm using about a four and a half foot cable. So it goes around once and then we're going to do a second loop right on top. see it's a nice tight fit one thing I did is I, I heated up this wire a little bit with a heat gun just to make it a little bit more flexible because it's only about 30 degrees out today there we go and that pretty much completes it so we got two wraps around and you can see both ends and our leads coming out. So we're going to take a little look at the transformer. The original transformer on the primary, basically you have insulated wire going around here. There might be about a hundred winds around the bottom part of the transformer. The secondary that we have removed this has very fine wire wrapped around maybe a thousand times. It just keeps going around and around and around. And uh, basically, as it comes in the microwave, it's actually a step up transformer because you're going from only a hundred windings and you're stepping it up to like a thousand windings. Where what we're doing with our spot welder is we're doing a step down transformer. So here's our coil, and you can see it wraps around twice so it's going from a hundred winds down to two winds and what that's going to do is it's going to drop the voltage so with the original prime secondary you have a very high voltage but with the spot welder what we have is a very low voltage and a very high current so that's basically how the spot welder works so now I've set up my meter basically on the uh, 20 volt AC scale and uh, what we're going to look at, we have our probes hooked up, we're going to see what type of voltage that we have. We need around 2 volts to have an, enough voltage to use as a spot welder. So on the uh, mains coming in, I've already plugged in uh, two leads and we're going to plug in the cord to 120 AC and uh, we're going to take a look at the meter and as you can see we have 2.05 AC volts so that should be good enough to make a spot welder alright so I have a nail hooked up between the ends we're going to bench test this thing and see what our high current does to this nail Right away you can see it turning red. So as far as powering up the spot welder, I'm going to be doing mine basically the same way that Grant Thompson did in his video that you can find on YouTube. Um, I'm going to have a switch in the back that's used to give power to the spot welder and then when I want to weld uh, there's going to be a push button switch right up here and as long as the back switch is on and the push buttons hit it should weld so as far as the wiring goes first thing I'm going to do is uh, take the end I have a microwave wire and we're going to ground that 
right to the base of our transformer. Now I cut a split in the wire here. This is the ground wire and I'm wrapping it around the ground terminal and I'm going to secure that on our switch. And that takes care of our ground wire. Daddy, can I help you? Sure can. And what should I do? The next thing that we're going to do is take the black wire from our power cord and yeah. we're going to hook that up to the top terminal. Yeah, the top terminal of our switch. Of our switch. Nobody else's switch, just ours. That's right. Uh, so now I'm taking one of the spade connections from the microwave and we're going to hook that onto our primary, one of the ends of the primary. The other end is going to go to the top of our switch. So I'm going to hook it up to this terminal. And but the thing is the problem is not And that secures that. The next thing we're going to do is take one wire from our micro switch. One wire, yep. We're going to follow that. I have two white wires coming out of there. So we're going to take one of these and we're going to take another spade connector from the microwave. It's going to go to our second primary terminal. And we're going to take this and we're going to wire nut that to once again, one of the micro switch wires. Joe. I've elected to use a wire union because it's a more permanent connection than a wire nut. And we'll just leave that like so. Our last connection is going to involve the second wire from our micro switch, and that is going to tie to the white wire from our wall plug. So we're going to take these two ends and we're going to tie these two together using a wire nut. Now I've taken all my longer loose wires and secured them with a wire tie and I've worked my outlet through my opening. The last step is to take our resalvage microwave cord and we're going to run it through the opening on our end plate and secure everything in place using screws. So as far as my ends go, I'm using copper lug terminals. So we're going to connect our wire right to the end and we'll do that using lag bolts. And we'll tighten that up just like that. So here you go guys, we're going to do a little bit of tin, put in the welder, shut the handle. Turn the thing on. Find sometimes when you turn it a little bit, it helps get that metal a little hotter in there. And right there you can see a real nice weld and that is, ow, that's hot. But it's held together very well. Here's a little close up of a weld. So I have some nails in between the spot welder. We're going to turn this thing on and we'll see if we can weld these two together with a little bit of heat. I'd say that should do it. Let's see what that did. Not too shabby. It's very hot. It 
So I'm double wide six and this was a fun little project and if you like projects like this and other random things you can check out my channel double wide six. Thanks for watching and please leave comments the more we get the more people that will see this video. Have a good one.